Hey, Richard. Hey, Burke. Jeffrey, how you doing? Alrighty. Good. Welcome. Can I, t- can, I t- can I ask you something real quick? Yeah. Okay, hold on a second. Let's wait. Let's some people in. It's because it's hard. Right now, it's hard to talk with the music on. Yeah, I know. Yeah, so hold on. There's a girl right next to you. And she's just waiting for something to do. And there's a rose in the fist and love. And the eagle flies with the dove. And if you can't be with the one you love, honey, love the one you're with. Love the one you're with. Love the one you're with. Welcome, everyone. My name is Rich Procida. Um, welcome to um, our discussion on the Rolo Tomasi's book, The Rational Male. So The Rational Male by Rolo Tomasi. Uh, we're going to talk about the sections on the desire dynamic. And um, so what I'm going to do, all I'm going to do is read um, the book a little bit, read out of the book, make some commentary on it. And then after I do the little that then we'll have an open discussion yeah and then we're this is um part of my group called the um nonpartisan red pill men's group and we're a group where we talk about women sexuality relationships um dating politics and um without all the right-wing crap that's out there and so today we're talking this book is the rational male so it focuses on men, but I think women can can get some information out of this as well. And if there's uh, problems that uh, are things that women want to talk about from their from what's happening to them um, with their men, if they're having difficulty with that, then that's something certainly we can talk about. But um, so I'm just going to go ahead and get started. Um, so we do this every month. So next month we're going to be, let's see what we're talking about next month. Yeah. Mating. We'll be talking about mating next month. All right. So, um, but let's just start, I'll just go ahead and start and then we'll go ahead and have a discussion afterwards. So, the de- desire dynamic, he says here, the one, let's see, you cannot negotiate genuine desire. So he talks about here how some men come to him and say, hey, I want to get the, the sex back in my my relationship with my wife or my uh, my girlfriend and um, or probably wife more. And um that somehow this comfortable familiarity with one another causes genuine desire to dissolve or or leave, that the problem becomes losing desire and how to maintain that desire because you cannot do a negotiated um, type of arrangement where sex becomes... Uh, sort of an obligatory thing. So how do you maintain the desire in a relationship between a man and a woman? And um says men will resort to negotiation. He will promise to do the dishes or a load of laundry more often in exchange for her feigned, feigned sexual interest in him. The genuine desire is not there for her. Her desire has become an obligation. So, and we can see how where this debate about 
men doing equal shares of the housework, you know, as if this were an equality issue. But of course, it's not because, you know, where's the equality of men contributing more financially uh, and how men contribute uh, more to the relationship in some ways. But it's really about losing desire. That's what that that issue is with men doing not doing their share of the housework is more you're not I don't desire you you need to help me more you know and the men's trying to do more to get that and so this is the play that's going on I think in part of that at least so he says men say think to themselves and I don't think this way but uh he says I need sex plus women have the sex I want plus query women about their conditions for sex plus meet prerequisites for sex equals the sex I want. And, uh, and that's not really how it works, guys. <laughs> Tell you the truth. And I don't think this way because um, I really want my woman to want me. Um, that's what I look for. And um, genuine desire they need to, they used to experience in the, at the onset of, of the relationship was predicated upon a completely unknown set of variables to them. So what are these variables that predicate desire? A genuine desire is something a person must come to or be led to of their own volition. You know, and he tells you a prostitute will have sex with you not be in exchange for money, um, not because she wants to. Although sometimes she does want to. And then you're you're really getting ripped off in that situation. I, I, I was in Roatan. i tell you a little more about that. And uh, I had a to tell you, you know, hey, you're the one who's going to benefit here. So, um, strive for genuine desire in your relationships. Okay. Real desire is created by her thinking it's something she wants, not something she has to do. So, um, a woman's Im imagination is the single most useful tool in your game arsenal. So, every technique, every casual response, every gesture, intim intimida imitation, or intimidation and subcommunication hinges on stimulating a woman's imagination. Competition anxiety relies upon it. Demonstrating higher value relies on it. Promoting sexual tension relies on it. Call it caffeinating the hamster, if you will, but stimulating a woman's imaginings is the most single most potent talent you can develop in any context of a relationship. Yes, everyone's going to get their two cents, Maria. That's for sure. We got more time to talk than I'm going to spend reading. So, um, women never want full disclosure. Oh, let me let me go back here. Um, this is the single greatest failing of average frustrated chumps, and that's a term he uses to describe the average guy who's frustrated; he's not getting enough sex. Um, they vomit everything about themselves, divulging the full truth of themselves to a woman in the mistaken belief that women desire that truth as a basis for qualifying for their intimacy. And what he said is, um, there's nothing, so the reality is that there's nothing more self satisfying for a woman than to think she's figured a man out based solely on her mythical feminine intuition or imagination. 
And so when a man overtly confirms his character, his story, his value for a woman, the mystery is dispelled and the biochemical rush she enjoyed from her imaginings, her suspicions, her self-confirmation are about you are gone. Familiarity is anti-seductive. Nothing kills game, organic passion, and limbido like comfortable familiarity. So despite their women's common filibuster tactics, and I think what she mean, he means by that is blocking tactics, women don't want to be comfortable with a potential or proven sex partner. They need their imagination stoked to be excited, aroused, and anxious to want sex with a potential partner. And in an LDR, it's even more critical to keep uh, prodding that imagination. And you go about that when your L- long-term relationship girlfriend or wife already knows your story and familiar familiarity becomes cemented in. So the easy an- uh, answer is to never let it get there, right? But um, let's see. And that this depends on the frame that you bring to the re- inter- into the relation ribs. The foundations of healthy long-term relationships are laid while you're single and dating non-exclusively. And so this is where I think people are going to get, uh, we get bogged down nowadays. We don't date non-exclusively. Um, women don't want, they, the first thing they want to tell you is, you know, it's just me and you, baby, if we're going to give this a go. So um, we're, and men have got to say no to that. You got to date non-exclusively. Um, he's getting more frequent, more intense sex. Yeah, he's saying that after the relationship, the passion and the intensity and the amount of sex decreases. That's his point, you know. That's what he says. I don't know if that's true myself. Some people say differently, but... um Still, I think these um, ideas are important. The primary reason for this is the relaxation of the competition anxiety that made the urgency of fucking you with lustful abandon, um, dating phase, abandon the dating phase, an imperative to get you to commit to her frame. They surrender the frame before they commit. Yeah, so he's talking about men here. We tend to su- su- surrender the frame when we commit, when we submit or capitulate to that demand that we're going to now in her frame, which is what I call the one guy at a time train. So we've got the one guy at a time train. No better than dating multiple women at a time. They just do it once at a time. And so... You don't want to ride the one guy at a time train. You know, you want to have, for guys, you want to have um, access to um, sex. You don't want to be without that because that gives you leverage. And you want to um, be dating multiple women and have multiple until you find that right person. Because that's the only way you're going to find, you got to go through a lot of women. You got to meet a lot of women. And you can only do that by dating non-exclusively. So um, don't capitulate to their demands. Um, and if they make, if they want to use sex as a lever, hey, you know, that's up to them, but you don't have to have sex with them. You can get it someplace else. So he says, combine this with the anti-seductive familiar, familiarity and the growing commonness of your own value because of it, which means your value is decreased by familiarity. And you can see exactly why her sexual interest wanes. 
and whose frame you enter in a, to in an LTR sets the foundation of the LTR. Um, she enters your world, not the other way around. Secondly, you need to cultivate an element of unpredictability about yourself prior to and into the LTR. So um, it's text on this is so tiny. That's the problem with this book is text is so tiny. Perfect is boring. Okay. Women will cry a river about wanting Mr. Dependable and then go off and have sex with Mr. Exciting. In an LTR, it's necessary to be both, but not one at the expense of the other. I'm not sure what he means by that. She must be reminded daily why you're fun, unpredictable, and exciting, not only for her, but for other women as well. This requires covertly, tactfully, demonstrably implying that other women find you desirable. Women crave the chemical rush that comes from suspicion and indignation. If you don't provide it, they will happily get it from tabloids, romance novels, The View, Tyra Banks, or otherwise living vicariously through their single girlfriends. By playfully staying her source of that rush, you maintain the position of stimulating her imagination. Being cocky and funny, negative hits, and many other aspects of game work wonderfully for this. Just kicking her in the ass or busting her chops playfully is sometimes enough to send the message that you're fearless of her response. You can break her frame with cockiness and the imagination imaginings will come with it. Breaking from an established, predictable familiarity is often a great way to fire her imagination. Married guys will report how sexual their wives become after they get to the gym and start shaping up after a long layoff or for the first time. It's easy to pass this off as looking better makes women more aroused, which is true, but underneath that is the breaking of a pattern. You're controllable and predictable so long as you're pudgy and listless. But start changing your patterns. Get into shape, make more money, get a promotion, improve and demonstrate your higher value in a more appreciable way and the imagination and competition anxiety returns. So that's it. That's uh, And uh, I think what he's saying is that women need to be jealous. You need to make a little a woman a little jealous. I remember I was in this bar in Rotan with my new girlfriend. And there were women looking at me, you know? And so... And then this gay guy started hitting on me. You know, and he was pushing up against me and everything like that. And, you know, that's competition anxiety. You know, she's sitting there. So I hopped over and gave her a kiss on the cheek. So um, anyway, that ought to stimulate some conversation there, um, particularly around the issue of women wanting commitment up front in the relationship and how I think men need to resist that. But it, And it may give some tips to women about what really is, is necessary for them to be able to get back to feeling that way. So um, if you want to speak, just um, raise your hand or or pop up in the chat in the re, is it the reactions menu? There's a raised hand button, or just a mute and, and ask your question. I'll look in the chat. I 
See, Victoria, that's that's one thing that is a mistake, I think. You know, when I went to um, Rotan, I went on Tinder. And the strategy, guys, for um, finding women on Tinder, set your, you know, location and so forth. You know, actually, Tinder changes the location when you go, so that's a good thing. And then, boom, just start hitting the, the like button. And uh, so... And that's what I did. So I went to Roatan, Honduras, started hitting the like button. I'm here for five days. Come over and meet me. And only one woman said yes. That woman came over. I brought her over. And boom, that was it, you know, right away. So the woman, the la mujer, se dice si, gana. The woman who says yes, wins so um so i would be very thinking that sometimes i told another woman there i'm talking to her you know and she's like you can go get a prostitute women are dense dense they think men don't like prostitutes because they have sex with them no it's because they charge money and <laughs> and then um yeah, so Tinder is great, Victoria. Uh, for me, I think the women are match or too uptight about sex. And um, so, and and so, anyway. So somebody come up if anybody has any comments. I'll go through the chat here. Okay, so Maria says, my two cents, I assume to have a real loving relationship is first has to be long-term like a marriage. I do not think that a short-term relationship can really be a true unconditional love from your partner. Okay, so short-term, long-term relationships. I don't really know what short-term means, to tell you the truth. What is a short term? They're all to me. Long term is where it's at. The the I, I prefer to use exclusive, non exclusive, or committed and uncommitted in a relationship, where that person is is oh, um, I see you there. Um, go ahead and unmute. I see you. It says you raised your hands, but where is it? Yeah. Yeah. A uh, 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 short term could be like could even be a year, three months, six months. Could be two years. Um, the longer the relationship, I just think you're you get more closer, right? More I honest. Think, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I think that's the problem we face here, right? Does it have to be exclusive to be that way? I don't think it does. I think it can be non-exclusive and be that way too, and. I think a lot of the relationships women are offering are short-term relationships. They say, hey, be with me. We'll only have sex with each other, and we'll find out whether we like each other or not. Well, don't buy that. Don't fall for that one. I mean, um, first of all, the moment you accept, they're going to withdraw the offer, right? And so, and it don't exchange sex for commitment. It's just, it's just not an exchange. That's a that's what Rolo Tomasi would say is what doesn't work is trying to make an exchange for that. And the truth is what women want is to have your commitment, um, have you all to themselves um, for the time that they need to make a decision. And then if it works, it doesn't work. I mean, I'm not at my age, I'm not interested in, in that, you know, um, but, and there's also the issue with, is there marriage? Do we still have marriage? as an option and if marriage is not an option what is that it's the exclusivity that's the equivalent of marriage so why would you put that in front of the relationship don't put it in at the beginning of the relationship you make a commitment you make a commitment when you decide you want to be with that person for the rest of your life not at the beginning because that's a short-term relationship when you put commitment at the beginning of the relationship and that's why we should have relationships until we decide you know and not be so hung up about it 
you know um i think there's a lot of power control that's involved in that. I mean, when I went to Roatan, even the prostitutes want a long-term relationship. Even the prostitutes want you to have sex with only them in a long-term relationship. So it's not like um, this is not a type of, you know, they they, they all want that, it's in, you know. So that's not it. You know, what's, what is it is um, hanging out together, enjoying one another, and seeing who hangs around. For guys, who's going to hang around? You know, you really enjoy each other? Do you really like spending time together? Do you really like that? Is it going to last? I mean, there's other competition out there. There always is. You know, uh, you're going to have to find that right person if you're going to make that commitment. You know, and the only way to do that is go through a lot of them and not just hook up with the first one you meet, one at a time. Okay, who's next? All right, let's see. We got two new messages. Well, when you say values, Victoria, that's a loaded word, you know, because it's not values. We both value love. We both value truth. We both value honesty. We both value um love for one another, compassion, even commitment we both value. In fact, the com value commitment may be a little higher and because we are, men are the gatekeepers to commitment. You see how women treat sex as the gatekeepers to sex? You see how they treat sex? They're the gatekeepers to sex. Watch how they, how they use that tool. You know, we're the gatekeepers to relationships. And that's something women just have to, have to accept. And true love, Zena, that's what it's about, right? It's not, but there's this idea of the soulmate myth, and this is the only one for me. I, I think that's a little extreme. But um, first of all, I have love in my heart, and I love every woman I'm with. I'm a man. I can do that. And and But am I in love? Am I romantically in love? Or more accurately, is this the person that I would be happy with for the rest of my life? Is this... Um, it's a great deal like this woman in Roatan. Is she, is she, the only question is, is it, is it real? Is it real? 